Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, we're going to be revisiting our How to Create 2048 series. We got a few requests from our subscribers asking for a video on how to make the blocks change colors when they combined. And so that's what we'll be covering in this lesson. Now, before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. Also, share our channel with any of your friends that might also be interested in game development. All right, so to add a color change mechanic for every time our fill objects combined, we'll need to add some code to our fill script. Now, the first thing that we need to do in this script is add an image variable so that we can change the color of the fill object. So I have this image variable, which I've called my image. Next up, you'll want to create a new function with the return type of int which I've called get color index. This function also has a parameter of type int, which I've called value in. Now for this color change mechanic, we're gonna have an array of colors. And so we need to calculate an index variable based on the current value of our fill object. So inside this function, I'm creating a local variable of type int called index and I'm setting it equal to zero. We then have a while loop where we're checking to see if our value in does not equal one. Then for every time we loop through this while loop, we increment our index variable. So I have index plus plus. We then want to take our value in and divide it by two. Now we can do this because every value in our 2048 game is even and when you keep dividing an even number by two eventually you're going to get to one which will kick us out of this while loop then outside this while loop i'm taking index and i'm subtracting it by one this will account for our array starting at index zero after which we can return our index variable once you have this function created there's some code that we need to add to our fill value update function the first thing that we're adding is a local variable of type int, which I've called color index, and we're setting it equal to the return value of our get color index function, and we're passing in our current value variable as the parameter. Now we can skip over this debug statement, and the next thing that we want to do in this function is make sure that our my image variable is initialized. And so I have my image equals get component, and we're looking for an image. Now before we go on to this last line of code, we need to go over to our game controller script to add in our color array. And we have that right here. It's a public variable of type color, and I've made it an array, and it's called fill colors. Now don't worry about these other variables right now, as we'll cover these in the next video. So once you have your color array, you can save this script and we'll go back to our fill script. Inside our fill script, we can now set the color of our image component. So I'm taking our my image variable dot color and I'm setting it equal to gamecontroller 2048instancefill colors and I'm accessing the element at our color index value. Now there's one more thing that we need to do, and that is we need to copy all this code that we wrote in our fill value update function, and we'll paste it into our double function. But then you can go ahead and get rid of the initialization of our my image variable. Once you've done this, we can then go ahead and save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, all we have to do is set up our color array. And so here I've set our fill colors array to the size of 20, and that is for testing purposes, but the actual array will probably need to be a lot bigger than that. I haven't done the calculation on the exact size, but it would need to be big enough so that it's impossible to reach the end of the array. Or maybe you could find a way to, at some point, restart how we index the array. You'll then need to set each color in the array, and when you set the color, you'll want to make sure that you change the alpha channel to be 255. But once you have your array set up, you should have a working color change mechanic. All right, so here we have two twos, which are white, and that is element zero. And then when I combine them, they become a light yellow, then orange, and peach, and so on. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to make the blocks change color when they combined. If you found this video to be helpful, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos.